You and your prospect have come a long way together. You did your homework and found them. You approached them and you got the appointment. You established rapport and trust with them. You presented solutions to the problems and overcame their objections. Now it's time to ask for the sale. For the relationship salesperson, asking for the sale or closing is a natural progression that should be a smooth and stress-free. When you're closing, you're helping your prospect make a decision that will benefit them. This is in sharp contrast to the traditional sales methods that are more about selling product than meeting the prospect's needs. In traditional sales situations, the pressure to close can be so great that salespeople frequently refrain from asking for the sale to avoid rejection. Closing is the culmination of the deal. It's where the rubber meets the road. Each time you've gained their agreement, you're one step closer to closing. Now make your closes natural and easy. They should flow directly from the other parts of your presentation and not sound like they're forced. Be sensitive to your prospects' responses and close whenever the opportunity arises. In our profession, we call this the ABCs. That stands for always be closing. While no two salespeople are exactly alike, here are a few closing techniques that seem pretty universal. Regardless of which closing approach you use, you have to be confident, enthusiastic, and a strong believer in your solution. There is no other way for you to succeed. Remember my advisor Sunshade story from the Improving Your Game lesson? I speak from painful experience. One of the most common closing techniques is the assumptive close. The assumptive close is where the salesperson assumes the sale and the next step is for the prospect to buy the product. Here is an example of an assumptive close. You're out shopping in a high-end clothing store and you've tried on lots of different outfits. Your fashion consultant has graciously assisted you in selecting your clothing. You've just told her that you've tried on enough clothes and found what you need. She then picks up your garments and heads over to the cash register. The fashion consultant is using an assumptive close. She never asked you if you were going to buy the clothes, she just assumed you were. A subtle way for her to move you from buying your clothing to her closing. Bad pun. Ouch. Now, movements or gestures often support assumptive closes. If you've ever been handed a pen by a salesperson or suddenly seen a contract magically appear in front of you, you've witnessed an assumptive close. My wife and I recently went shopping for a new car. After test driving one, the salesperson asked us, where's the first place you're going to go in your new car? He also asked, what are you going to do to celebrate your purchase? Since we hadn't agreed to buy the car, his remarks were all assumptive closes. The salesperson had been in this situation before, and he knew when to implement his assumptive closes. By the way, we bought the car, had a nice long drive, and had a marvelous dinner to celebrate. Since you never directly ask for a sale with an assumptive close, they are known as indirect closes. Direct closes take confidence and courage. The most direct closing technique is to simply ask for the sale. You put the question to the prospect, are you ready to make this decision? You can dress it up if you want with such snappy lines as, are you ready to put this great system to work for you? Or, are you ready to assume the market leadership of your industry? But sometimes, the direct approach with straightforward words works best. Here's a great way to implement a direct close. I call it the three yeses. I ask the prospect three questions that I know they will answer yes to, followed by a direct close. Based upon their hot buttons, I might ask this type of question. Have we demonstrated how service levels to your business would improve with our solution? I wait for them to answer yes. I then follow up with, would you agree that the creative strategies we've proposed will increase leads to your business? Once they've answered yes to that question, I come in with my last and my strongest client benefit question. Do you agree that a partnership with us will save your firm $250,000 annually while improving your service and creative? After answering yes for the third time, I come in with my direct close. Then let's make this official and get our partnership rolling today. The advantage of the three yeses is that it gets a prospect saying yes to you and puts the benefits of your proposal directly in front of them. When you use a direct close in this way, prospects are far more inclined to respond favorably. Sometimes a prospect is still not comfortable making a buying decision, even after the three yeses approach. They may need to see all the pros and cons together. 
This closing approach is called the Ben Franklin in honor of his decision-making methodology. With the Ben Franklin, the salesperson asks the prospect to make a list of pros and cons regarding their decision. Now, to be, be aware that implementing the Ben Franklin, you must be ethical in listing the pros and cons. Many salespeople are inclined to only highlight the pro items. You need to address both pros and cons objectively and fairly. For that reason, I encourage you to utilize this strategy when you are certain that the pros outweigh the cons for your prospect. Two additional closing techniques are the times they are a changing and the puppy dog approaches. The times they are a changing close is used when you know a price increase or out of stock situation will make it harder to buy your product in the future. For example, if you know of a price increase, advising your prospect of that may help you close the sale. The last approach is the puppy dog approach. The name originates from the animal shelter practice of letting families take animals home overnight in hopes that they will keep them forever. And if they don't, they can be returned and get their money back. By giving the prospects this risk-free opportunity, they have confidence in making the purchase. They know that if they're dissatisfied, they can get out of the deal. So there you have five exceptional closing techniques. Your personality and practice will help you determine which ones work best for you. Like the old saying goes, you can't win them all. Not all your sales efforts will be successful. Rejection or the R word goes with the territory. The quicker you learn to accept it, the better off you'll be. Now here's some ways to stay motivated and deal with rejection. Nobody likes dealing with rejection. It's not that selling is intimidating, scary, life-threatening, or that you're afraid to talk to people. It's just that we hate being turned down. And the best way to deal with rejection is to accept it. Understand that it's not personal, just a business decision. Prospects aren't telling you that you're a failure as a human being, that you're a worthless incompetent, an overall loser, or that you've no right to exist. All they're saying is that, hey, not now. Here are some ways that I deal with rejection that may help you. First, surround yourself with positive thoughts. I carry a card that lists personal affirmations and motivational thoughts into every sales call that I make. On one side, the card lists the things that I'm most thankful for, my health, my family, my friends. On the other side are a few quotes that inspire me. If it's to be, it's up to me. Or, never, never give up. Choose whatever keeps you motivated. When making sales calls, remember, the world is filled with cynics, losers, and other people who are very quick to criticize and want to pull you down. But you know what? That's their problem, not yours. So learn to ignore them. When I started my company, so many people around me told me I would fail. They said the economy is terrible, unemployment is high. Why would companies want to do business with me and more? I didn't listen, and all these years later, I've never regretted my decision or my choices. There are always winners, and there are always losers. Rest assured, if you're watching this lesson, you're a winner. One of the best illustrations of maintaining a positive attitude, which is an utmost necessity when facing rejection, comes from that wonderful child's bedtime story, The Little Engine That Could, by Waddy Piper. So maybe it's been too long that you've heard the story, so let me give you a short synopsis. A wee little steam engine faces a daunting task. The little steam engine has to pull an overstuffed train load of noisy toys and highly perishable candy over a really steep mountaintop. And it has to get to some isolated kids in a village on the other side. To my knowledge, there weren't any odds makers or bookies betting on this, but if there were, it looked pretty bleak for that little engine. So, how is this tiny little engine gonna make it? The little engine had a confident attitude saying, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. It never gave up never doubted itself and kept pulling and pulling while saying, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Sure enough, after a lot of pulling and even more verbal redundancy, the little engine pulled the train over the mountaintop and arrived at the village on the other side. The little kids were ecstatic. They got new toys and now had enough candy and sugar to rocket propel themselves over the mountaintop without the little engine. But seriously, the story's message is clear. If you believe that you can do it, you most certainly will. Finally, if I haven't made you feel better yet, remember that sales professionals are the true champions of the business world. Marketeers, financial guys, and other executives talk real tough, 
but it's the salespeople that are the front line. Without salespeople, there is no business, no revenues, and none of us have jobs. So take heart. Rejection hurts, but everyone depends on you. Salespeople, you rock. It's quiz time. Time to see what you've learned. Question number one. Although you haven't asked for it, after your meal, your waitress hands you a dessert menu. What type of closing technique is she implementing? Is it A, an assumptive close, B, a direct close, C, a Ben Franklin close, or D, you still look hungry close? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And the answer is A. Your waitress is using an assumptive close. Question number two. If a salesperson asks the prospect to make a list of pros and cons regarding their purchase decision, what type of closing technique are they using? Is it A, a direct close, B, a three yeses close, C, a Ben Franklin close, D, the times they are changing close, or E, a puppy dog close? 10, nine, eight, seven, And the answer is C. The salesperson asking a prospect to make a list of pros and cons regarding their purchase decision is using a Ben Franklin close. Question number three. A salesperson offers a prospect a risk-free opportunity to try their product or service. They're very confident that the prospect will enjoy the product so much they won't return it or cancel the order. What is this type of closing technique called? Is it A, a direct close, B, an assumptive close, C, a puppy dog close, or D, all of the above? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The answer is C, a puppy dog close. This is where a salesperson offers the prospect a risk-free opportunity to try their product or service. Question number four. If a salesperson points out there will be a price increase in the near future and that acting now would be in the prospect's best interest since they'll save money, they are using A, an indirect close, B, the three yeses close, C, the Ben Franklin close, D, the times they are changing close, or E, the puppy dog close. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the answer is D. The salesperson pointing out a price increase in the near future is using the times they are a changing close. Question number five. A truly great salesperson never needs to deal with rejection. Is it A, true, or B, false? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The answer is B, false. Even truly great salespeople need to know how to deal with rejection. So to recap closes, number one is ask for the sale. Number two is the three yeses. Get your prospects to agree with three things and then go for the close. Number three is the Ben Franklin. List the pros and cons of making a buying decision. Number four, the times they are changing close. Give your prospects a reason why it'll be impossible or more expensive to act in the future. And number five, the puppy dog approach. Let your clients try your product knowing they'll love it so much they won't want to give it back. And finally, dealing with rejection. Understand that rejection is not personal. It's just a business decision. 
Be sure to surround yourself with positive thoughts and positive people and learn to ignore the cynics. Congratulations, you've completed chapter nine. In chapter 10, after the sale, you'll learn proven ways to serve your customers and keep them happy.